probably a month and a half ago, which would be about August 2024, DJI has released an update that will allow you to use your Garmin or Apple devices for telemetry data in your videos. So all you guys who are kind of getting new to this, this camera is a really good camera. Like it's, I say it's one, it's my favorite vlogging camera because it's got battery life and it's got good low light performance, good features. The accessories for this camera, extremely underrated by the way. Um, I'm gonna keep bugging Insta360 to do this exact same, uh, make this exact same accessory. But this video is about telemetry data. Did DJI fix the telemetry data from Garmin device or Apple devices? I don't know if Apple devices always work, but Garmin. I got the Enduro 3, I had the Enduro 2. DJI didn't have this option when I had the Enduro 2, but uh, they do now. I have the Enduro 3. I'm going to go into track mode, okay? Your Garmin device or Apple device has to be able to track your activity and save it to their perspective app. For Garmin, it is going to be the Garmin Connect app. If you have a Garmin device, it can be a bicycle computer. I repeat, any Garmin device that can save data, it can track what you're doing and save it to Garmin Connect, you will be able to use that device to give telemetry data to your, instant, uh, to your DJI Action 5 footage. The only thing is, you have to remember, I think almost all Garmin devices, unless it's really, really expensive, and they would probably advertise that it has 10, uh, 10 hertz um, GPS speed. This Enduro 3 is not designed to go 160 miles an hour. It's not, a, it's not designed to be on your body. Like, can your body accelerate to 30 miles an hour in two seconds? No. So Garmin will not put a GPS chipset that can record that many samples per second, if that makes sense. So 10 hertz per second is like 10 pieces of information per second. The Garmin Enduro 3 and almost all of their bike computers can only do one hertz per second. So if you're in a fast car, if you're in a motorcycle and you hit accelerate really, really hard, you will see lag in your GPS telemetry data. I will repeat, you will see lag in your GPS telemetry data. Now, if you're just out cruising, you drive, you accelerate a little bit, all that should be just fine. One hertz per second should be just fine. It is those guys who are racing a motorcycle on a track, for example, if you're doing highway pulls with your buddy, this GPS method using your Garmin watch, it will tell you the speed you're going. It's just not gonna be able to keep up with hard acceleration and hard deacceleration, okay? So just keep that in mind before you do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm jumping in butter, we're gonna probably do a hard pull or two. I'm gonna set my Garmin watch up. What you do is, with the Garmin Enduro 3, okay, if you guys have any other Garmin watches, like I said, as long as they can track you, track your activities, um, you will be able to use it for telemetry data. The cool thing about the Garmin watches is, if you got a Garmin heart rate monitor on while using the watch, if you're riding a bicycle, for example, let me show you guys my bicycle real quick. I have, I have two different things on my bicycle. I have a speed sensor, which is right here on the front hub. And I have a power sensor right here on my pedal. And then I usually will have my bike computer up here. All of those three different devices give you three different bits of information. One tells you how much power you're using to ride your bicycle. Obviously the wheel speed sensor is telling you how fast you're riding and the Garmin bike computer will give you telemetry data all in itself. <clears throat> I can use those. I can use my Garmin bicycle computer and every device that I have that's hooked up to that bicycle computer. If I have my heart rate monitor on, you didn't see in this video, but I have it in the house. If I have my heart rate, heart rate monitor on while I'm riding my bicycle, you'll be able to see the bicycle speed. You'll be able to see how much power you'll be able to see my cadence, all kinds of information, heart rate, um, calories burned, all that stuff. You can see it, you can put it, DJI has in their software, uh, telemetry data points, you know, different data fields that you can put on the screen and you can see all of that stuff. Because I have my Garmin watch on, I'm gonna still have it on the screen. So you guys should still be able to see everything that my watch can read as a Garmin device, which is heart rate, calories burned, all that kind of stuff to include the speed. What you guys need to do is you need to make sure that your Garmin device is hooked up to your Garmin Connect app. Now, this is gonna, this is where it gets tricky. <sighs> How can I explain this? Whatever device you save your Garmin Connect information to. So for me, my Garmin watch is directly connected to my phone. I have Garmin Connect downloaded on my 
tablet. Now, why am I mentioning my tablet? I use my tablet to edit my videos. However, my Garmin watch, in order to get the telemetry data from this watch, I have to use my cell phone to do the initial video editing. So after I record this video, I need to upload it to my cell phone because my watch only talks to my cell phone when it comes to Garmin Connect. Like as soon as I'm done recording this video, Garmin Connect on my phone is gonna automatically, it, it's set up to automatically pull from my watch. Now if you use a tablet to edit your videos, you have to turn the Bluetooth off on your phone so that your watch doesn't connect to it once you're done recording your videos, your, your telemetry data. So before you record your video, so let's say I'm going to stop this video right here. I'm going to set this watch up. I'm going to go to the feature name, Track Me. It doesn't matter which feature you use, guys. You have to figure out which modes on your watch or on your Garmin device will actually save your telemetry data as you're performing your, your activities. So for my watch, so you see how it says activities? I'm gonna hit activities, right? And you see where it says Track Me? I'm gonna hit Track Me. And then it says, you know, incident um, unsupported, incident detection unsupported. And all I got to do now, you see that green um, play arrow? I just press that part of the screen. Okay. Or I just press the green button. And boom. Now my telemetry data is starting. Garmin devices, it finds GPS reception really, really fast. So I would say wait about 20 seconds before starting your activity. So right now... This thing is saving GPS data as I'm sitting here. Do you have to prop your watch up on a dashboard and do all that stuff if you're in a car or if you're in a motorcycle? Do you need to tie your watch to the to the to, to the handlebars of your motorcycle? Not necessarily. You don't really have to. It's gonna save it regardless. Another thing, after you're done recording, you have to make sure you go back to your Garmin device and press stop activity and then save activity. And this is where I tell you. If you want to edit the videos on your tablet, you have to make sure before you get that far that your phone's Bluetooth, which I'm going to make sure mine is off, make sure your Bluetooth is off because your phone connects with your Garmin device through Bluetooth. If you Apple guys, if your phone connects to your watch via Wi-Fi, turn it off on your phone if you do not want the telemetry data to be saved automatically to your phone. All right, so we're about to do a pull here in a second. Three. Two, one. Okay, so for this video, you just want to make sure the actual camera is on. We have the DJI Action 5 Pro on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to find the DJI app. Make sure your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is on. You see on the top left? of the screen where it says 1409 Friday, November 29th. Make sure your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is on. You're gonna go to the DJI app and always make sure that your camera's already hooked up to your app. See, I haven't updated this camera, so this might not work, but if it does, we're in money. This is gonna do its thing. All this stuff that's happening right now is all prompt stuff, so we're gonna skip this. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom left. Well, let me see right here. The orientation says bottom left. Bottom left where the play button is, I'm gonna hit that and I should see all of the video files that I've recorded ever. So these top three, those are gonna be the ones I'm looking for, okay? So I'm gonna hit the little check mark on the top right of the screen because I wanna do mass selections. So I'm gonna hit that once and you see just below it, it says batch select in blue writing. I'm gonna hit that one. If I wanted to continue to pick multiple batches i can just hit batch select and it'll select all the batches for that specific day or date so i got these right here i'm gonna hit um on the bottom right in the middle you see that little arrow pointing down like it's like pointing down into a, a bowl or a plate or something like that we're gonna hit that but before we do no we can hit it we can hit it let's hit it it's gonna save all of those video files to my cell phone You'll know that the video has telemetry data when you see speed highlighted and you see it's not highlighted. All these first, what is it, six or seven pieces of information, the camera does all of that on its own without any GPS data. So it's not here. So what do you do if it's not here? You go where it says data import, kind of like to the right of the play button, just below the actual video screen. 
hit data import and you're looking for Garmin Connect. So we're gonna press Garmin Connect. And now, if we scroll to the, if we pan on the bottom to the right, you see speed and everything is highlighted. Now we have telemetry data. Now let's see if it's actually fixed. All right, just to recap, remember, make sure your GPS, your Garmin device, your Apple Watch, whatever, make sure you're outside for at least 20 seconds uh, before you start activities. Now somebody may be wondering, well, are there any benefits using your Garmin device or your Apple Watch as opposed to using uh, DJI's GPS remote? Yes, and only the fact that you get to use your heart rate, you get to have sports data, like, you know what I'm saying, if you're working out, if you're hiking, your heart rate, your cadence, you, you get to see that stuff in your video, and that's the difference between um, using a Gapel or a Garmin device versus using DJI's GPS remote. D G DJI's GPS remote will give you basically, you know, your elevation, your speed, um, your G-forces and stuff like that. And like I said, you can still get the same thing with the Garmin devices and Apple Watches. You know, as long as it can read it, you'll be able to see that type of stuff. So let's go on ahead and get ready. One, two, three. second and that's what you get the Garmin GPS device reads 10 samples per second so if you want to you know have telemetry data that keeps up with your pace that's when the Garmin GPS remote is you know that's where it's, it comes in handy you know well, let's find out get back on the same road pick the different performance mode this time Let's do our little countdowns. Three, three, two, one. Now you guys see the difference between <laughs> DJI's remote and usually your Garmin and or Apple devices. All right, okay, DJI, I see what you guys did there. You sort of fixed the problem, okay? At least the telemetry data from the Garmin watch showed up in the video. And like I was telling you guys earlier, the Garmin watches only read one sample per second. So if you're doing high speed accelerations, hard deacceleration, hard cornering, it's going to have that delay because it can only read one piece of information per second. And you may accelerate 20 miles per hour within a second, you, you know, depending on the type of vehicle when it comes to vehicles. Same thing with a boat. A boat may accelerate harder than one piece of information per second. So you're just going to have that delay always in your video when you're using a Garmin device. Apple guys, I have no idea what that looks like for you guys. I know y'all sample rate is 10 Hertz, which is 10 samples per second. So you guys may be something close to like the DJI remote where you guys seen that it was keeping up with the car's acceleration a lot better. The phone's magnetic mount wasn't, but <laughs> whatever. Okay, it was magnetically connected to the car and the torque tossed the camera when we actually hooked and had traction with warmer tires. Um, but DJI, good job, DJI, because before my telemetry data from the Garmin watch wasn't showing up at all. Like just, it wasn't doing anything at all. So um, I need you guys to still work on that though. We need to have it automatically synced. I had my Garmin watch synced to my phone. So the timestamp was accurate along with the DJI Action 5. Every time you guys connect it to your phone, the timestamp updates to your phone. That way, you know, if you have both devices connected to your phone, they should all be on the same wavelength when it comes to timestamp that way your actual telemetry data should sync up to the actual action in your video it didn't do it this time 
after the update, I had to still adjust the timestamp, or should I say, I had to adjust the telemetry data to the actual action. Uh, just uh, until DJI gets that sorted out, I recommend you guys do like a countdown or do some sort of a hand gesture just before you accelerate, if that's possible. If not, don't know what to tell you. But Jay on the Segway, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. Like and subscribe, okay? It was free. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, all right? But if you want to, but definitely give me a like for doing all this, all right? So uh, see y'all in the next video. Peace.